today's lesson is about beneficiary forms. And it's kind of like, oh, yippee, we're going to talk about beneficiary forms today. And I'm going to tell you, this is, might be the most important thing that we do uh, among a number of important things, but to, to get people to keep these things updated and be aware of them and make sure that the money in a particular account is going to end up in the right hands. So uh, this is both a problem and an opportunity. And so the, the problem is, is we bring in new clients all the time and we really require that they bring in everything, every financial document that has a beneficiary on it or just every financial document. And what I'm talking about is every IRA, 401k, life insurance policy, annuity, and every financial account has a beneficiary designation on there. And many times, they haven't been touched in 30 or 40 years. And people haven't even thought about it. And when I'll start asking people questions about this, when they're coming in as new clients, they say, oh, well, we redid our will. That's all taken care of. Okay, and I say, great. You know, I'm glad that you redid your will. But that will is going to get settled through probate maybe a year after you die. And the money from your IRA after your death is going to go to whoever's on that named beneficiary form. This is going to happen long before that will is settled. It doesn't matter what the will says. This money is going to the named beneficiary. And so I'll tell you another problem that we run into is inconsistencies. And when people start bringing this in, they've got different people on this different stuff depending upon when they bought it and within their life, and then maybe they changed one and they didn't change another. So the message here is get out everything that you have that has money on it or financial or numbers. Get it out and find out who's the beneficiary on that. Get a copy of it. It's online. If you can get on your account online or request it, like in a retirement account, you may not be able to get it online. Well, then go to the plan administrator and call them or write them and say, I want a copy of my beneficiary form. Don't ask them who's the beneficiary. Just have them send you a copy. And then what you're going to want to do is get all of these in the same place. And my guess is, is if you'll go do this and you get them all together and you get them written down, you're going to find there might be some inconsistencies. And the people that come into us, we do this for them as part of the financial planning process. And it becomes a big part of the estate planning process. And this is where the opportunity comes in, is, is that when you think about estate planning, that means I'm going to plan what's going to happen with my stuff and my money after I die. Who's going to get it? And, you know, people get pretty specific about this. I mean, generally, they want it to go to their children or to their surviving spouse first and then to their children. Some people don't have children. Some people don't want to give it to their kids equally. Some people don't want to distribute it all to their kids. Some folks want to give it to the church or another charity, or they may have nieces and nephews. I mean, it's just, it's all kinds of people. You get to decide that. What, what my job is, and really your job when it comes to beneficiary forms, is just to see where it all stands right now. And then if through the financial process, planning process, we implement something for you, or we get a plan started, and you get some new products or some new financial instruments, well, then we're going to make out those beneficiaries on those new accounts exactly according to what you want. And then it's our job to keep them updated. I mean, that, that, that's the problem, is, is that people don't really think about this. Or if they went to a lawyer, they did their will, they're thinking they took care of all that. And... These are, this is a separate thing. It doesn't have anything to do with the will. And the real opportunity with that is that you have these named beneficiaries. All this stuff is going to get settled 30 to 60 days after you die. I mean, there are instances where a life insurance company is going to take a little longer to pay off because they got to investigate a claim or investigate the policy. But typically, this is 30 to 60 days if you, your heirs get about their business of getting the right forms into them. We just had an example with one of our companies where this lady's uh, mother had passed away. She was the beneficiary. 
she called us up. She actually had about four different companies, and the only one we sold her was with a big mutual company. We called the phone number looking for a claim form. We got the lady on the line. They filled out the claim form online. They could see that this lady was the beneficiary of her mother's policy. They verified that her mother died through an obituary online and paid the claim uh, instantaneously. And then they took banking information from her and zapped the money to her. And this is, that's fabulous. You're not going to get that kind of service out of the probate court down at the county courthouse, I can assure you. So this is an estate planning tool, is the beneficiary designation that we use quite heavily. And, but that comes with a risk as well as an opportunity, is they need to be filled out properly. They need to be updated from now on so that, you know, when you die, you can't, you can't change this afterward. So it's got to be the correct way. Now, we're going to talk about, well, I wanted to mention this financial accounts. We don't find a lot of our incoming accounts that people have actually used transfer on death. So you say, my bank account doesn't have a beneficiary form. Well, it has something that's called a little something different. It's called transfer on death. And it's just like a beneficiary. And typically, most people coming into us don't have these things. So that would be another area that you could check with your bank or your stock brokerage or any other type of account is do they have a transfer on death? And you, you maybe never filled that out. It's an opportunity for you to just have that money pass outside of probate as well. Now, a contingent beneficiary, what's that? Is A contingent beneficiary has no standing after death if the primary beneficiary is alive. So the only purpose of a contingent beneficiary is if somebody, um, if the primary be beneficiary is deceased. And I can't tell you the number of policies that we bring in or people that we help and the beneficiary, the named beneficiary years ago on this policy they wrote is already dead. No contingent beneficiary. And what happens in that case is now we have to reopen the estate of the deceased person who is the beneficiary and distribute the money uh, through the probate court, essentially. And it costs a lot. There's delays. It's, it's a real big hassle to make all that stuff happen. So you're going to want to name condition, contingent beneficiaries. It's just who gets the money if the primary beneficiary is no longer here? If you have several primary beneficiaries, then you... You know, you need to call me and we'll talk about that just to get them done properly. Now, multiple beneficiaries is each share written clearly. And, you know, they just, if they're used percentages, they all need to add up to 100. I mean, there's only so many slices in a pie, unless you slice it real thin, but it, all the numbers and percentages need to add up to 100, or you can use a third, a third, a third. It just needs to be clear. And if it's not clear, it's very easy to change beneficiaries. The same time you're calling these companies and asking them to see the beneficiary form or to see it, ask them for a change of beneficiary form. And if you can get online, it's typically just somewhere in there. You can download it. You bring all this stuff into me or you send it into me if you live 10 states away. Um, we fix this stuff for people, even with insurance companies and policies we didn't even write. Now, so where are your beneficiary forms? I mean, we typically, you know, we recommend that people put their estate plan and all their insurance policies and some reference to the beneficiary form for the retirement account all in one place. Now, in the modern time, we provide an encrypted server that goes on for our clients that are incoming so that everything will just be there with passwords so that you, and then we got to inform the beneficiaries. So in just preparing for this lesson, some of my compadres that I'm working with just really asked, well, you know, if you leave this niece, you know, the beneficiary of a life insurance policy, should you tell her? Well, I think that'd be a pretty good idea. And also, if she's not your primary person, taking, like if your daughter is the person taking care of all your matters, it'd probably be a good idea to tell your daughter and then have it in that place that, you know, this policy, the named beneficiary is Sarah, my niece. 
And then the contingent beneficiary, in case Sarah's deceased, is my nephew or somebody, or back to my daughter. You know, who knows? So um, just the importance of taking this seriously, getting it updated, having it be consistent with your will. I mean, it's fine if you have all this written down in the will. This is going to take precedence, but you still need a will. I mean, you can't put a beneficiary designation on a house or a boat or a beach house or somebody. You also could do a trust, and that's another way to avoid probate. So we can get into all kinds of sophisticated financial planning, and we recommend most clients redo their will, but most people are missing this whole point of how prevalent beneficiaries are and then how easily they're settled after you know, after a person passes away. So I'm Hans Scheil, and I thank you for listening.